Yeah, there you go. We're recording now. Excellent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again for being on our call tonight. And what, what, what a topic to, to cover tonight in our prosperity book. It's called the different or the eight categories of involvement. And Becky, I know many of us, if not all of us, we decided to join this amazing industry or start this profession of direct sales because some of us were interested in doing something different that we saw this industry could have given to us. So for some of us, it may be that we wanted to make more money. For some of us, it may be that we wanted a better quality of life, or we wanted to have more time on our hands, or we wanted less stress, or simply looking for a change, yeah? And now here you are, here we are. So congratulate yourself for choosing the direct sales profession as the vehicle to get you there. The one question that we often hear from almost every distributor is, where am I headed in my business? Where? And jokingly, our forensic networker, Ramin, says, uh, he always says, direct sales is the only scenario in life where one wishes to fast forward their lives a few years just to see where you will end up. And this category, this chapter, allows you to actually fast forward to one year, two years, five years based on where you are at with your business to see, it's almost like having a crystal ball really, to see where you're at. Now, you can do that using this chapter. So we call this chapter, the other name for this chapter, apart from it being called the eight categories of involvement, here's your crystal ball. We place this in the palm of your hands this evening. We have you take a look at it, shake it, turn it, roll it, do all its kind of things with it. And then it allows you to see what, where you will end up in the next couple of years or where you are with your business now. So over the years, I have seen this chapter from going through this training with Ramin. And the first time I listened to this training was actually via his YouTube videos. Over the years, this chapter has become the most important and most shared chapter in the industry. The reason for that is it has been translated so many times and because it tells where you are at and it allows you to assess yourself and to know where you are going with your profession as in, the, in uh, direct sales. So candidly, we will, it will be the most accurate home-based business information ever released to anyone at this time. So the, one of the main issues with our beloved industry, sadly, which is seriously hampering our field or our workforce progressive um, success is the lack of flow. That is, we don't give off accurate information from leadership to the troops on the field. And because of the gap there, it creates a lot of what we call casualties and a lot of persons get left behind. You see, one of the things that I love, not everyone that becomes a successful or is in the top is qualified to train. And we've seen that happen, not just in direct sales, We've seen it happen in many different companies. Somebody's very good at their job, then they promote them to a, new, to a new position like a manager, and suddenly that person is expected to teach other persons how to do what is supposed to be done. But not every achiever is a great trainer. So one of the very powerful statements in, network, um, in the forensic network is, what you do know will hurt you. You see, our top earners, like our top millionaires, I don't think this is inclusive in, in Opulence Global because I've learned so much from Reza's training. I've learned so much from Rene's training. And these two gentlemen have led me so far up the ladder with the training that they've delivered. But generally speaking, the top 1% industry millionaires as two thirds not been qualified to pass on along advice regarding success in our industry and that's hurtful obviously they do and that has duplicated in over 70 years plus in our industry so our workforce simply doesn't know what they don't know and what's worse about that is they don't know that they don't know hence the slogan what you do know will hurt you so the crystal ball that you're being handed over with now is we're going to have some fun with it because 
some of the categories really crack me up <laughs> because I remember being in some of them before I'm where I am now. Becky, I'm sure you can remember the places that you were at and every time we attend the Forensic Network of Training in Canada, or we go on stage and we brag about where we are and where we want to be. We come back the following year and we're still the same place. And then, you know, because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So enjoy the crystal ball that we'll go with through with you tonight. Take some time as we go through it to assess where you are. And I want to encourage you that as we go through these categories, ladies and gentlemen, be honest to yourself about where you're at. Because it's important to identify where you are at to know where you're going to, so you know what steps you ought to be taken and what systems you ought to follow to be able to get to where you want to go to. So, Becky, you ready to rock and roll? Awesome. So our first group is called the Lotto Group. Let me get my glasses. Where did I put my glasses? So guys, these folks that come to business presentations and get all seduced and hyped up and buy the package, and then what they do, they just disappear. Do you know anybody like that? I know a few persons like that. The first person I know that was like that was me, yours truly, Venetia. Yes, I was in a lot of group when I got started. In some cases, we get engaged based on the false promises of our enrollers. I remember my enroller one time said to me, sign up, I will build it for you. He actually told me that. And I came in with all of the hype and his energy and oh, he was all over the place. These investors, like how I used to be, didn't buy a business and pursue the direct sales profession. Heck, I didn't even know I was in the direct sales profession. They bought a home-based business lottery to see if the direct sales numbers would come up and make them wealthy. So if this is you that you bought into your package because somebody promised to build this for you, then you are not in the profession, nor are you in business. You will not succeed, unfortunately. But lucky for you, direct sales companies, especially Opulence Global, usually distribute quality products. So as a lottery player in this business, in this industry, enjoy your products. And I'm sure you are with Fountain of Life, Fairy Flawless, our toothpaste that just came out and rocking all of our fashion products as well. So the Weekend Wanderers, I love these. These, I've seen quite a few of these and boy, did I envy them. I used to envy them. This group would come, they're the interesting ones. You know, these people usually come in their first meeting. I mean, their, their suits are so sharp, their, their attire is so sharp. They look good, they smell good, they speak good, they walk good, they, I mean, they're so confident. They see this profession as really easy, they don't feel that they need to educate themselves or attend any training because, I mean, they know it all. They come in fast. Some of them actually bring in a whole bunch of people. Sometimes they even generate a few large checks for themselves right away because of the people they bring in. A few weeks to a few months later, when they don't see these people they bring in begin to duplicate what they do, what begins to happen is that checks begin to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then typically these weekend wanderers begin to blame the company that they're in. And you know what they typically do? They typically quit or they simply move to another company. But what damage they leave behind is they leave many casualties behind, which is one of the things that has really hurt our industry over the years. This group comes into the industry with the attitude that they are going to make a million dollars even if it takes them all weekend long. <laughs> Even if it takes them all weekend long in the shark suit and everything. Listen, guys, if this is you, again, you are not in the direct sales profession and your new get rich experiment will be very, very short lived. Lucky for you again, our companies in direct sales usually distribute high quality products. So enjoy your products, but the unfortunate part is the casualties that you always, always leave behind. So the slave drivers is the third one. So I want to make this interactive. As you take your notes, please take a note and be honest. And I'm hoping that some persons will be able to share with us what category they actually fall into. 
The slave driver group. Becky, was that you? Were you ever a slave driver? No, you sure? But you used to call me as your sideline. Do you have anybody for me? <laughs> this group is rare, but there. These individuals are the investors who come in and expect the upline to build an entire business for them. This group is not satisfied with help or support that they would receive from their upline, but they actually expect the upline to keep creating, I like to call it free money, welfare checks for them. These people are not shy. They're not embarrassed to ask their uplines to place one or two hot shots on their legs to get them started. Hey, Vern, can you launch a person for me? Can you give me a person to launch? Hey, Vern, you have many people launching. Can I get one? Often they want to pass along their box of business cards or their list to uplines to call and get them, get their prospects in for them. Um, I've had a few of these persons on my team, unfortunately. There's one person that actually almost called me and said, oh, I thought this business said that you're going to help each other. And then I asked, well, what kind of help were you expecting? Well, if I want persons to launch, you should be able to help me and give me somebody to launch. And it means that we've really misunderstood what your upline's role is. And every time I talk about the slave driver group, I love our upline pledge that our forensic networker, our CEO put together. Our upline pledge, if you've never read it, go into your back office. It's there, download it, print it, laminate it, frame it, and put it up in your room. Put it somewhere that you can always see. To remind you that your upline is not your slave, that your upline is not your employee. I often tell my team members that I don't work for you. So don't send me and do a one-on-one -on -one for you. Don't send me and do your work for you, but make the appointment when you are available so I will accompany you to work with you because I don't work for you. I left my last job in September of 2012 and that was the last time I had a boss. And in this industry, I do not have a boss. And to my downline, don't treat your uplines as your slave, your slaves, because they're not. So if you have been treating your uplines as such, it means that still you are not in the direct sales profession, nor are you in business, and you will not succeed with that kind of attitude. Understand that direct sales promise of being in business for yourself and not by yourself does not mean that your upline business partners are your slaves, not at all. So again, lucky for you, the direct sales companies usually distribute quality products. So enjoy, <laughs> enjoy. So hopefully we don't have any slave drivers on the call tonight. So nobody will be confessing that they are a slave driver. But if you are, be honest so we can help you move away from there very quickly. The social group. Oh, I love that group. Becky is one of them. She's pointing to herself. I used to be there too. Ooh, I love a group time. I love congregating. I love good energy. So the social group generally is nice, really nice, friendly people. And they compromise a, a large percentage of, they comprise, sorry, of a large percentage of the direct sales workforce. Their primary reason for being involved is for the social aspect and not for the money. You see, Becky's already loaded. Her grandmother died and left her an estate and she has a loaded bank account and oh, she's living the life. So she doesn't have friends. She doesn't have a social life, so she joined this just to make friends and to hang out with people like she's in the Ottawa business right, um, office right now. A toy is going on and she's having fun online with us while uh, she's supposed to be in the room with her guests. You see the big smile on her face? <laughs> they love making friends first. Making money is secondary. They are also extremely helpful at event planning and coordination. And they often volunteer the time to sit at the registration table and take all other tasks. They are at every meeting and training, but never bring along any prospects with them. Becky, that's not you anymore though. I know that's not you anymore. If this is you, you are a very, very important part of the team and you are highly liked and respected by everyone. If your primary reason for getting into the direct sales profession is to make more friends, 
and enjoy great products, then you are absolutely in the right place. However, if financial gain is a part of your plans, you must make some changes to your method of operation or you will not reach financial significance. So again, enjoy your newfound friends, Keep coming to the events because we always need somebody at the product table and to greet people and to man the slides and so on and enjoy your products. So if you are happy with your social, being in the social group and that's where you really want to be, then you are having a time of your life because we usually have great people in this industry and we usually have fun at all of our events. Even when we have our hard meetings, when we're done with the hard meetings, we shake a leg, we drink two booze and we go have some, some good music and then we head home. So social group always have fun. I do enjoy being part of the social group from time to time though, <laughs> because there are times I come to the event and I have no guests there and then it's a party. So I enjoy being there a few times. And then we're getting down to a little bit more serious categories, guys. Are we, are we cooking with gas or are we cooking with laser? Oh, I can't access my, I can't access my tuba. Can you see any comments back? So as we go along, guys, if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the chat box and then we'll go through them after. So we have the sometime group, the sometime group, just the name tells you, right? This group is the largest segment of the home business or direct sales workforce. They call themselves part-time, but they're not. There is a distinct difference between the two groups. Sometimes, allow the business venture to take a back seat to all their other competing commitments. I'll say that again. Sometimes they allow the business venture to take a back seat to all their other competing commitments. They simply conduct their business when they can and as long as they can. They don't have a plan of action or precise business plan nor are they building their business on a consistent basis. They simply do it when convenient or when the opportunity presents itself, like my boss pissed me off this evening, you know what, I'm done with this, let me go and call my list. Uh, you know what, I got a new bill slapped on me and then I need to make more money, you know what, let me go hustle for well for the weekend. Oh, my child needs a new bicycle and I don't have access. I don't have enough disposable income now to do it. Let me go push some uh, fairy flawless. Let me go to some show and sell some products. Or So it's always when it's convenient or when something comes up that warrants you to have to go to your business. These are called some timers. If your promises is for your home business to eventually release you from your job or traditional business, then you must not, you must not, you must never socialize your business and treat it with, and you must treat it with utmost respect. Doing a mini presentation in an elevator or having a chat in the hallway is not showing respect to your business, which is your absolute best financial freedom option. So again, if you're doing your business casually, you're sitting by the bar, you're trying to do a presentation, you're in the elevator, you're trying to do a presentation, you're on the bus and you're trying to do a presentation. Somebody says to you, oh, I see what you're doing, what's it about? And you're trying to, so it means that you are treating your business casually. And as you do it, as persons perceive your business and they perceive you. So if this business that you have is the promise to give you financial freedom, then it means you ought to give it absolute respect. You cannot socialize your business. If this is you, you are halfway there, which is a yippee yippee, mm -hmm. jumping in the air, hitting your, kneel, your heels kind of jump and flip. And what you need right now is a precise business plan. As a champion athlete, as Ramin is, he knows, he knows in sports the difference between Olympians and fun-seeking athletes. That is precise plan of action that champions follow. So without it, they would simply be competing fun-seeking athletes. So if you are trying to move from your job or your traditional business and making this business replace your full-time income or replace your job or replace your traditional business, it means you simply need to have a plan of action. More than likely, you already have the skill sets. 
more than likely you already have a certain level of passion. So it means what you need now is to have what we would refer to as a method of operation. So you know there are little things, the things that you need to do consistently every day. So moving from a some timer to what we would call a part timer is a very, very simple transition. So again, if that is you, you are halfway down the line. The difference between a some timer and the next successful group, which is the part timer, is that precise business plan that will lead you to greatness. The objective is to shift as many people from the some time the some timer group to the part timer group or above as possible in your team, starting with yourself. So if you have a team and you are a some timer, make it your duty within the next week to move yourself from a sometimer to a part-timer. If you don't know how to put together a method of operation, speak to your MIFA to help you put together that plan so you can move there. Once you move, it means now you can help your team move from a sometimer to being part-timers. Make sense? Yes, 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 yes. So if you want to stay as a sometimer, then you won't make more, much more money. You will continue to make some money and in some cases, um, you may even change your company from this one to another, but I don't know many people who leave uh, opulence and go anywhere else <laughs> because this is the deal. If you want to stay as a some timer, then you will enjoy many good products, but you will not reach your financial significance. While you may make some money, but the financial significance that you do want, you may not get there. Objective is to shift as many some timers to part-timers or higher as soon as possible. So now we're getting to some of my favorite groups, the ones that many people think they are at, but are not at, but want to be at. Does that make sense, Beck? Did I sound like I was making sense? <laughs> so this group does all the right things and has a real opportunity to reach most of their financial promises. A portion of the part-time group will go on to becoming part-time serious or even full-time. This group is not in a rush and is committed to most of the success principles. They will earn a consistent income and in some cases even replace their full-time income as a part-timer. Um, I think Becky is there or moving from there to go to part-time serious. So, however, there are two key weaknesses that part-time group possesses that separate them from the two most successful groups. And I want you to pay attention to this one. If you have your prosperity book, you want to highlight that portion, guys. They have no commitment to becoming a trainer for their team and only rely on the company systems and the upline partners to provide all their team support. Hear this? The difference between a part-timer and a part-time serious. If you are a part-timer, it means that you are taking your business on. It means that you are making money. It means that you are attending all the webinars, you're attending the events and so on. What you're lacking is that you have not been, you have not committed yourself to becoming a trainer for your team and you are simply relying on the company systems and upline partners to provide all of the support for you. People are always attracted to strength and will follow the leaders that are willing to teach and lead. This does not mean that you must become a public speaker, no. It simply means that you must know your business well enough so you can teach it one-on-one, -on -one, so you can teach it on the phone, so you can host webinars and have small events for your team. Your people will also want to see you participate in weekly meetings, even if it is a, sh um, a sharing of a simple testimony. Uh, Beck, can you still hear me? Okay, I hope I didn't lose everyone. My screen just changed. Beck, can you still hear me? Okay, because my screen just went blank. I apologize for that. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this means that you, it doesn't mean that becoming a trainer or supporting your team means you have to become a public speaker where you have to go on the stage and do all of these things. It simply means 
that you know your business well enough to teach it to your team members one-on-one -on, -one, on the phone on webinars or small events or just simply by sharing a testimonial or being the host on a webinar this is where you can start to show your team that you are stepping up in leadership remember you cannot lead from behind so get in front and become visible and that will inspire others in your team to do the same and enhance your team's momentum people are attracted to strength and will follow the leaders that are willing to teach and lead i would highlight this whole thing in my book because for me that's where my uh, step up be began in opulence global well when we used to be global wealth trade when i first went through this training and i saw the part-time group and what separated the part-time group to the part-time series i started spending time to study to study my business, to study my industry, to study the leaders, to study the people who were successful. I wanted to know what they did to become successful. What were their cultures? What did they do every day? What did it? I was, I became obsessed with that. And because part of my background coming into this company was that of a trainer, it made it very easy for me to jump in. So for me, I needed to learn the material well enough. For me, it was embarrassing for my team member to call me and ask me a question for me to tell them, I don't know. And then them to call me again and tell them, I don't know. Or for them to call me a third time and tell them, I don't know. It's embar it would have been embarrassing for me as the team leader, quote unquote, because I brought you on board, you brought two persons on board and you're helping me create money, uh, earn money. So it's only fair of me to know enough or to keep learning so I can inspire you to learn and I can empower you with information to help you moving even faster than I do. So again, I will reiterate this. People are attracted to strength and will follow the leaders that are willing to teach and lead. Something back that always happens at our, our weekly presentations in St. Lucia and even when we have corporate events, uh, but because of the persons who are in front of the room, persons like myself, Dr. Anthea Emanuel, Arthur Anthony, Ivel Doyle Francis, there's so many others in St. Lucia, because of how strong they are in front of the room, other persons' guests will be sitting in the audience, and when the tour is done, they come to us and tell us they want to launch with us. I'm sure you've experienced that yourself. And you will explain to them, this is not how the business works. And they will tell you, I want to work with you. I want to launch with you because you're very good. You're strong. And I want to be successful. The onus is on every single one of us. Even if, even if you don't want to step in front of the room, even if you don't want to be on webinars training like I am, even if you don't want to travel the world and become a QT with the company, but when you become strong, the people that you bring on board then begin to trust you. They begin to believe in you. They begin to have confidence in you that you know what you're about and they can rely on you when they need help. And that is what strength we're talking about. Not to be a great speaker or to be a great um, webinar host or that kind of thing. Be strong in knowing your material. Be strong in what you do in your business. So when your downline come to you, you can give them that support and that assistance that they need to move them to the next step. Does that make sense, Ben? So the part-time persons, they have not built like and trust with their key leaders, mainly because they have not utilized their home to provide support or to spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with their leaders. This group is missing the all-important human element that is required to build a large business. So just think about it. Why do companies, businesses, churches, et cetera, have Christmas parties, New Year's parties, barbecues, some activities, et cetera, for their staffs and clients? It's a human element. People let down their guard. People let down their hair. People put on their short pants. People start to dance. People start to have fun. People start to drink booze and then they start talking and saying all kinds of things. <laughs> so the human element is significant in building like and trust with your team and your key leaders. You may have some really great leaders sitting in your team and you don't know because you have not built like and trust. So it's time for you to put on that hat and begin to build like and trust. Some persons may say, you know what, Vern? Uh, I don't want to bring anybody in my home. 
my home is not conducive for me to bring anybody in my home or I'm a very private person. My home is really my den and I don't want anyone in my home. Then one of the other things you can do is to find someone on your team that would be willing to use their home to host an event. But while we go into their home, still own the event as yours in your other team members' home. Treat your team. You don't want to go to a home, then take them by, I don't know, in St. Lucia, we go to a nice bar that sells uh, barbecue wings and we buy some drinks. We have good music and we talk, we rub shoulders, we have fun, and then we go dropping each other home and we let down our hair like that. If this is you, then you are absolutely on the right track. All you need to do is to stretch yourself a bit more by hosting weekly events in your home if possible, or a mutual place. Make a habit of treating your leaders for a quick latte or a quick meal at a nice location and consistently conduct other like and trust building activities outside the normal business functions. Uh, my favorite like and trust activity with my team members is traveling to events, that's Ramin speaking, especially the travel is a few hours long. Magic happens on these business event activities for last, that last a lifetime. Well, if Reza was on this call, he would tell you what happens on our road trips in St. Lucia. When Reza was here last month, we went through a few events and when we were coming back from the last event from the South, we stopped halfway through. It was probably about after 10, and then we left the place two in the morning and we had training the next day and we got to training hopefully sober and uh, leveled headed and sound mind and Reza delivered phenomenal training. We were on point, we received all the training, but that night was so amazing. Oh my gosh, everybody let down their hair, took off their shoes. We ate, we had drinks, there was great music. We danced and danced and danced and then we had a great time. So. There is a caution though in this. There may be some teams or some persons that may take this in the connotation that they should have a lot of fun, but don't have too much fun that it costs you your business. Make sure that you identify business time and like and trust building activities for your team. Draw a line between these two because if you don't, then if the like and trust or the, the fun part begins to get too big or too frequent, then it begins to take over the big deal, the main deal, which is the income generating activity for your business. So create a schedule, if you may, to having these like and trust events for your business or for your team. It could be once a quarter, you have a family event. I know in St. Lucia, we used to have a big annual event. We go by the beach and everybody brings their family, their spouse, their kids, and that's the time everybody gets to know each other's families. And uh, my kids call everybody else auntie and uncle, and their kids call me auntie. And, and then we begin to have this family synergy going on with the like and trust activities. So again, become very aware as you generate these activities, the like and trust, that the fun factor does not take over the business, actual building of your business. So the quote for this, to end this segment, is you cannot lead from behind. So get in front and become visible, and that will inspire others in your team to do the same and enhance your team momentum. Momentum, momentum is a great word, I love that. Momentum, it will enhance your team momentum. So the part-time serious group, whoo, that's the group that is getting to have money. <laughs> This is the select group that you always hear about who went from zero to $10,000 per month in 12 months doing this part time. These stories are true and every company has them, but let's put the facts on the table. This special group may be termed part time, but they really are two full time. They have two full time commitments. Turn this off. Beck, did you lose me? Okay, so those persons that we see as part time really aren't part time. They have two full time commitments. First, they have their full time jobs or the full-time traditional business, 
that takes at least 40 hours per week of their time. And then they have their second home-based business or direct sales business that always, that also takes 25 plus hours per week. This is serious. This special group is totally motivated to build a direct sales business to replace their full-time job or to replace their traditional business like yesterday. They live, they live, sleep, and they do everything their business, and they are constant in the state of exhausted and excited. So when you hear we talk about E and E, you often hear Sanas talk about E and E. She's E and E. She's E and E. It means that she's excited and exhausted. This weekend, I was E and E. Until they reach their financial promises, they continue to live and sleep their businesses. It takes commitment, though, to be able to keep on track on that pace for 12 to 18 months. That is how much it will take to achieve your initial five-figure monthly income promise. It means that you have to be consistent, 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 living, breathing, sleeping your business consistently for a minimum of 12 to 18 months to get to this $10,000 mark per month. And that income is promised once you remain consistent. So you're here to know that it's not easy, but it is simple and definitely it's worth it. The vast majority of part-time serious persons will end up in the full-time within two years. They work the business consistently and not in spurts like how the sometimers or the part-timers do. They use all the existing company tools and if the company does not have sufficient support and training tools, they will create them to support their team. Just like pro athletes on practice days, the part-time serious group will never be too busy or too tired. They show up as they are supposed to and get down to business day after day. And as I read that, as I go through that, it even gets me almost emotional because we see, we call that sweat and blood. And I have uh, persons in my immediate family who are athletes. Like I have my niece who's pro tennis, a nephew who's pro tennis. And I saw these kids from two years old with their rackets on the tennis court. And today at 17 and 14, they're traveling the world playing tennis, representing St. Lucia. And younger players will look at them and say, I want to be like you. I want to be good like you. I want to be successful like you. Persons say that to me in my business today. And my question always is, are you ready to do what I have done to have what I have? So it is not easy to be in the part-time serious group, but it is simple. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, it is definitely worth it. The only exception to this rule is when leaders from other direct sales companies switch and bring with them other qualified leaders who immediately fall into part-time or part-time serious or full-time categories. So what this is saying really is there are persons, for example, that would leave another great company or will leave a company and they will come on board with 50 persons with them. And that means they have, they come in with a team that is starting a big, that they start off immediately as part-time serious or even full-time. In this case, the leader can succeed, can succeed rapidly without investing in commitment and the efforts that would normally be necessary for everyone else, then it's not necessary for them. Let's not let these exceptions confuse us of what it takes for an average person to achieve similar results. So the group that most of us want to be in most persons want to be in, but struggle to get there. The full-time group. The full-time group shares many similarities with the part-time serious group. Most full-time distributors started off as part-time or part-time serious and on their way to full-time, on their way to full-time. However, there is one serious danger that full-time distributors face which sometimes can lead to financial turmoil for many. <laughs> I remember I went through that. The industry's common teaching is to work your business on a part-time basis until you replace your full-time income. That would be your job or traditional business. Then quit your full-time income and build your home-based business full-time. 
This sounds great and it is the objective of millions of direct sellers. For many of us, that's the dream. The danger here is that until the forensic networker program, before that program came about, no one was providing these ambitious entrepreneurs with a full-time home business plan. And that is where the danger lies. The standard industry teaching to full-time distributors are to continue working their part-time business plan and simply do more of it. That's what the industry has taught. We've seen over and over again distributors who started part-time and quickly replaced their full-time income with their company's part-time business plan and quit their jobs. When that happens, the newfound freedom <laughs> that most of us had never had will sidetrack their focus as they start to enjoy the fun things in life. Some often fall into the sometime group category almost immediately. When they finally decide to get back to work, they become very confused because they don't know what to do. There was no plan. The reason for the confusion is that working a home-based business full-time is a totally different business than doing it part-time, totally different. So part-time participants can get away with doing little since they have a full-time income that pays their job, that pays them from their job. So if they didn't make as much money in their business, they still have their income from their job or traditional business to give them some form of income. Also, regardless of their income, the part-timer feels good about any effort they put towards their business since it is over and above what they do full-time on their jobs. And that remains uh, positive and motivated for them. The distributors on their team also see them as committed within the platform of part-time distributor. So because you're so busy and you still have time to do this as part-time, your team members see you as very committed. All distributors work habits are created during the part-time phase. But once the platform changes to full-time, listen, the lingering is said that because most feel they already know the keys to success, and when they don't get the success, they were expecting they simply blame the company and they were with that the company that they were with or the industry on the whole. So it's important that if they had known that the method of operation was wrong to begin with, that is when they move from being a part-timer to a, a full-timer, then that would, these changes would have been necessary for them to succeed. And this is very, very crucial because I remember when I moved from being a part-timer to a full-timer, I didn't follow any of the industry's rules. Uh, persons who know me know me to be stubborn, hard-headed, stubborn, hard-headed, stubborn, hard-headed. And if they tell me to lie down, I would spread my wings and I would fly. Uh, they would tell me to go north, I would go south. I used to be like that a lot. So I started being a full-timer without the method of operation. And then I found myself sleeping on my couch many days because I'm not going to work. And I found myself not calling the people I'm supposed to call. Those. The work I was doing as a part-timer, I wasn't doing as a, part, as a full-timer. So this chapter is needed for you to read at least once a month. And the reason for that is for you to assess your performance and your method of operation, to see your efforts and taking you into your business for the next three to five years. Remember the crystal ball we spoke about? If the industry simply adopts this, adopts this chapter and seriously implements it with every company, the reputation of our industry would eventually be amongst the most regarded industries, even beyond franchising. So direct sales is the last bashment of the free enterprise. I always love this phrase. I believe that wholeheartedly, and I have experienced it wholeheartedly as well, working from home and online in direct sales is the last chance for us average people to accomplish something extraordinary and hit a financial home run. Direct sales have allowed hundreds of thousands to escape poverty and mediocrity and tens of thousands more to become wealthy. Ironically though, the very same amazing attributes that make our direct sales industry so special are also its downfall. That is low financial investments at time, com and time commitment. 
since the majority of our workforce is comprised of inexperienced business people, you know, employees with an employee mindset running a business who have never operated a business before, we must be firm with the must have success factors of our business. One issue is that it is evident in every company is that some people are lured into our profession on the false pretenses and promises by their uneducated and unqualified enrollers. And that is a danger for us. So I believe the deception and embellishment has hurt us tremendously. While I believe our industry is under constant assault and has been bruised and battered by the same workforce that it is trying to help. So I am very, 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 very excited and happy that the forensic network sits inside of opulence global and every person on this call belongs to opulence global so going through this ch this chapter means that now opulence global has given us quite a number of steps ahead of every other company in the industry because of this so again the direct sales industry is the last bashment of the free enterprise the last chance for average people for average individuals like me and you to finally hit a financial home run. So since 1990, Ramin have had the opportunity to coach over 1 million distributors and counting directly and indirectly, including us. During this period of time, he has identified direct sales or MLM distributors falling into these eight distinct categories. Unfortunately, the first five that we went through uh, what were the first five? You will tell me in the chat. So begin writing for me what the first five categories were. The first five categories count for the vast majority of the workforce that will never realize their true promises. Forensic replaces for uh, replacement for goals in their respective ventures. So this industry continues to be under constant assault and has been bruised and battered by the same workforce it has been trying to help. The result is many genuine attempts by new entrepreneurs. So pattern habits create confusion and frustration. The routine plan is no longer fit for them and the new comprehensive full-time plan is required. So if you're a full-time part-timer and you're moving towards full-time part-time serious, or full-time, you absolutely need a work plan or what we call a method of operation. The danger is that until the Forensic Networker program, there was nothing that provided us ambitious entrepreneurs with a full-time business plan. And boy, do I love our forensic system. The cause of the confusion is twofold. One, the candidate list. You often ask persons, do you have a list? And you encourage them to build a list. Our, our, our book, gives us the way to go into our minds as deep as we can to create a candidate list. When the distributors are part-time, they have access to plenty of prospects that they meet every day at the job or while commuting. This constant contact with friends and associates makes it easy to invite people out or guests to meetings. Normally, this should not be a problem if you become a full-timer who have a proper candidate list of at least 250 names and growing. But since most distributors don't, this becomes a major problem as well as a block after they have gone full time. In traditional businesses, remember, the inventory you need to operate your business is stock. Without it, you are out of business. In our industry, your inventory is people. Therefore, before you make a decision to go full time, you must make sure that you have a very healthy list of candidates that you can be contacting on a daily basis. So the motivation is the second thing. So first is the candidate list. The second is the motivation. Again, the two things that causes confusion, the candidate list and motivation. The driving force for most persons who are part-time or part-time serious is to go full-time in their business to achieve freedom. That's time freedom, to spend more time with their families, to spend more time with themselves, to spend more time doing the things that they love. In fact, 
once you are full-time dis- uh, direct seller, you are in fact retired. Boom! <laughs> Regardless of how hard you are working your business plan, you are probably thinking, what is full-time has to do with retirement? I love this so much. Every time I travel, when I fill out my immigration card, when it says occupation, I put that's the best, the place I write the, the most legible on the, on the card, on the immigration card. Retired. I put that in capital. So to make sure the immigration officer gets that. And then they take my passport, they flip it to see how old I am. They look at me, they look at the card, they look at the passport, they look at me and they're confused. What, you retired and you're only? I say, yeah, actually, you're looking at my age, but I've been retired for seven years. <laughs> and that creates um, conversation and they want to know how they can create a retirement plan. So that's a different training. I'm going off course. The reason I say that is once you have the choice to work with who you want, when you want, then that's retirement. This driving force is what motivates part-timers to make phone calls, conduct tours, travel, and invest in their businesses. Once distributors go full-time, this driving force is no longer there. So it means that I've achieved it. So members tend to take their foot off the gas pedal because they have achieved their main promises of time freedom, regardless of what income they have. When this occurs, the following course of events will happen. When confusion sets in, demotivation automatically sets in. Once demotivation steps in, then it causes you to go into lack of action. Once you have lack of action, naturally your income will decrease. You will have less income. And when you begin to experience less income, then you begin a beg or a bump, then you have financial crisis. Did I say financial crisis? Let's move quickly from that so it does not resonate too much with us, yes? So the forensic network, a method of operation, for short, we call it MO. So every time you hear MO, it means method of operation, which consists of daily method of operation and weekly method of operation systems is a lifesaver for full-time home business owners. And it enables us to be successful in operating and growing our business year after year. And Forensic Networker has a brilliant advanced plan uh, that trains the industry today as to how to do a method of operation, what method of operation you should have, how to work your method of operation and so on. And it's brilliant. So Beth, let me see how much time we have. Uh, we're right on the hour. So let's get a little bit interactive and let's see how many persons took notes, how many persons highlighted in their books. So currently I fall into the category or categories of, I mean, I became a full-timer, probably a really, like I can really confess, confess that I became a full-timer about a year ago back (laughs) where I have been doing this consistently every single day. And what it has given me is consistent everyday income as a result. So my results thus far is I have been able to launch at least one shop every month. I have been able to have at least one VIP customer online every month. And I sell on average, uh, on average about 30 to 35 bottles of Fountain of Life weekly. That's my mandate. That's my method of operation. And because of that, it has allowed me to qualify for MGRS, qualify for the CAP program, and help other members of my team achieve the same thing, and has created cash flow for me on a daily basis because of the fact that I'm out on the field every day sharing information on Fountain of Life and selling Fountain of Life. Though the changes I would love to see happen for my business so I can get to the five-figure income consistently every month is to help more persons in my team become part-time and part-time serious persons so they can achieve their financial targets and that will create greater momentum in my team. So Beck, your turn. Uh, Do I have to unmute you? How do I do this again? Okay, get off. Uh, Come, stop sharing. Uh, Unmute. How come you guys can't unmute yourselves? Unmute. I unmute you, I think, back. Yay, I'm here. 
I think really? I you today. We can actually talk. <laughs> so maybe we have some new people on tonight. For those of you who know me, you know how much this has been killing me. I've been furiously <laughs> typing in the chat because I just have to get it out. <laughs> so I'm handing over back to you, Becky, and, and, and uh, Danny. I need to get some water. <laughs> Awesome. Go, go, go. Awesome job, Renisha. Wow. Like rock star. No surprise. Uh, we have some activity in the chat. A lot of it's been mine, but let's go back up and see what's what. Uh, we've got some people uh, telling us who they are. Maria Baptiste, like, what are you talking about sometimer, girlfriend? You are not a sometimer now. Maybe you were. And uh, we have uh, Tammy giving us some feedback. The first five groups are the Lotto group, the Weekend Warriors, Social Group, Sometimers and Partial Part-Timers, uh, for sure. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, let's see. I said that, uh, you know, you're retired and you're younger than I am, so I need to hustle. And they all, uh, we got some <laughs> people chiming in with that. Um, so you're showing us great leadership with your action and we love that uh, we've got some hellos and uh, some good evenings at the beginning of the call so we have people from all over the place which is amazing uh, just uh, I'm gonna scroll back down here and see what we have going on Wendy uh, Wendy I think you're in Anguilla but correct me if I'm wrong she says she wants to move from the sum timer and she's being honest recently she was i would she said i'm being honest recently i was here and last week i was like drop it and reset you know so many of us all of the successful people if you take time to talk to them which is why you go to events it's why you go to conferences it's why you go on the cruise whether you're qualified or not get on the cruise because when you get to pick the brains of all of our top income earners and leaders they're all going to tell you they all hit the reset button sometimes they do it so quickly you don't even know that they've had to hit the reset button but we all develop habits and the great thing about the forensic system and the eight categories when you review it once a month you can see where your habits are and you know we all trick ourselves into thinking we're one thing when really we're something else and it's a great way to measure. You know, Ramin has taught many times before, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. And that's what's so great about the forensic system because it's there's so much information there to help you measure and track where you're at. And we've all been there. And we've all floated from one category to another from time to time as well. I'm always going to be part of the social group. That's never going to change. Uh, but, <laughs> never going to change but um it's complementary to other things as well and i've been a sum timer for a long time struggling to get into that part-time serious and you know i'm getting more and more there every day but when you reread these categories you get to catch yourself and say ah no wait a minute you're still being a sum timer so it's great it's great information you've given us tonight Vern. okay let's see now and I know that Vern is um, on fire when I can focus on her and we have happy birthday and cake going like, okay, you guys, seriously? I've been listening to Bernisha instead of eating this birthday cake for Reza. So Aaron I love it. says, I know, crazy. So Aaron says, what a fantastic training from our queen trainer, Bernisha Charles Jones. Thank you for this powerful training. And Wolf Rochelle is saying, Vernisha, thank you. Where did we go? Apparently, I'm also a rock star, but you know, you are the queen rock star. Carmel is saying, Rebecca, I don't know how you can compete with Vern's energy. Oh, sister, it's on now. I'm going to compete <laughs> with her energy. Maria Baptiste says, excellent job. Uh, great training, ladies. This is great training. Winsbert says, I am part-time. Winsbert, you are a rock star, too. You are in the MIM team chat, always giving us positive, motivational daily videos to watch, and you're out there promoting your business. You're posting online. You're a great leader. We love having you here. Uh, Maria <laughs> Baptiste says she's just kidding about being a sometimer. Well, okay, good, because we know you're not. 
Making uh, the kind of money that she's three. making, right? What's that? <laughs> making the kind of money she's making as a sometimer, right, Maria? Well, can you imagine then? If she's a sometimer and she's being that successful, what we can do in Opulence <laughs> is crazy. Natalia says, great training, need to move from sometime to part-time, serious. And Mavis says, thank you, Vernicia. Mavis, thank you. Honey, you are at all the events. We always see you. You're always online. You're at all the trainings. You are also a rock star in this tiny little package. I'm so excited. I'm going to see you on the weekend. Uh, let's see. Tammy says, I can be honest here. I'm currently in the sometimers group. However, I'm hitting the reset as from the first anniversary conference. So I'm actually moved up to a partial part-timer as I'm working still for myself in four businesses a day. Wow, that's insanity. Uh, birthday cake does add the pounds. <laughs> yes, well, I had a protein shake for supper, so I guess we're at a trade-off now. And Lee says, thank you, Vernicia and Rebecca. Great job. Love both of your energy. Uh, if I've missed one of your comments or questions, if you have questions, uh, pop it back in the chat again so that we can uh, catch it. I don't see any questions in the in the box. Uh, I just so wanted to add, Rebecca, that I the reason why I love this training is because every time, like uh, Bernicia was saying, no matter how often you see this, it's like a checkup from the neck up, and then you mm -hmm. get to realize which, like, in which category you are. Like Aser is saying, I'm sadly a sometimer. That that t shows me that there is something eating inside of her. Like she wants to become a full timer or a part timer, serious. Mm -hmm. But the the amazing part of this is now you get to choose. This is what I love about this freedom. You get to choose where you want to be, what you're not doing right now, and how you can do those corrections to become that and you know achieve the next higher level. So I, I, just, I just feel that this is one of the trainings that really sets you apart from the rest because this is more like a, a training for you, mm -hmm. for who you are and what do you want to achieve in the business. So, Absolutely. Uh, and like I said, we've all... So, uh, you know, Vernicia and I, we've been through this training several times now. So it's exciting to be able to share it all with you. You know, you learn when you're sharing it with people. I was fortunate enough to be part of the very first forensic networking training in Niagara Falls in 2009. That was 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's unbelievable. What's crazy, when I got the call to help with this call tonight, I woke up in the middle of the night and my YouTube was on my phone. And do you know what was on my YouTube? It was Ramin doing the eight categories of distributorship popped up in my YouTube feed. And I started listening to it and watching it. I had no idea I was going to come on here tonight. So um, it's pretty crazy. You can't, you can find the training anywhere. Um, but yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and, you know, you, I don't think any one of us should ever feel badly about where we're at. This is just about being able to take a measurement of where we're at. And if we feel badly, don't feel guilty. Every single one of us has a life going on. We have competing priorities. If you've got a partner or if you've got kids or you're working that 60-hour job or four businesses, you have competing priorities. It's not about feeling badly. It's about acknowledging where you're at and if it doesn't match where you want to be then now you know how to take some steps to get to where you want to be and what's so amazing about opulence and our my five groups is that you're not having to figure that out by yourself you have people that um, have been in your same situation now our family is growing so much that you know, you can connect with somebody on Facebook that you know has a similar life pattern that you do and find out how did they figure it out? How did they figure out how to get that 20 hours of time in, in the week around their family, around their job, around their commute? How did they fit it in? So plugging into these calls is the best thing you can do for yourself every call we have it's the best way to grow yourself in your business and to go out and then take action from what you've learned in each of those calls 
Uh, Beck, the one thing I would encourage persons to stay on is the Tuesday night forensic calls because um, mm -hmm. you can see the momentum that's been built on this Tuesday night calls with Rami now. And the next chapter from here is really the forensic tools. So if you're moving from part-time or part-time serious, or even from part-time serious to full-time, what we're talking about is having a plan. And the forensic networker uh, method of operation gives you that plan. It tells you how many calls you should make daily. And it even gives you a beautiful, oh my God, I love this tracking system to the core of me. I have learned this tracking system and use it and manipulate it. And like I can eat it with my eyes closed. And But it is brilliant. So even if I tell persons, even if you are some timer, even if you are in the same group with Beck where you're just coming to have fun, but you're still doing a little bit of work here and there, track it. Mm -hmm. When you track it and you begin to see what's happening with just that little bit of effort, and then you begin to visualize by just doing this rest of effort, what kind of results you can have. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me over this past year. Danny can tell you because I started telling her my results sheets of my, of tracking my, my, my results. When I started seeing what was happening, when I started tracking it, I was like, whoa, how much time have I wasted all these years? When I could mm -hmm. have been hitting 20K already, I'm still here struggling because I am not doing it consistently. And I look forward to the next chapter that Romain will be training, which would be the method of operation, the ammo box, the candidate sheets, the tracking system. Oh my God, that's where for me, the, the icing on the cake begins to melt. So guys, stay on. It is 12 after the hour. I know we're supposed to be here an hour. Um, I will go to Danny. Danny, for your final comments before we close. I know comments are still coming in, Becca. Um, so I'll let you read these final comments before we take our final comments to close before we get um, quarter past the hour. Yeah, I want to make sure that we get um, we get a couple more here. Carmel says, I'm sometimes I'm working on changing it to a part-timer. That's awesome, Carmel. It's great to know where you're coming from. Aaron says, this is why I wished I had this training back 22 years ago, but that's okay. I'm here four years ago and it's a game changer in the industry and so blessed to have this professional training now. And uh, Arthur, Arthur, I'm Arthur Anthony tonight. Don't you know this? <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome training, Vern. As always, I'm part-time serious and always have to be taking action to stay there. And yes, it, it is about the action. We can fool ourselves into what we're actually doing. Uh, but being able to measure it here, um, I know every single one of you on this call, if you're taking action, you're having success. There is no way to not have success with the products that we have now. We don't have a niche market of fashion lovers. We have a product that 7 billion people on the planet need to have. We all want people to be healthy. So if you're taking action and forensic is the way to know you're taking action, you're going to have success. Awesome. I love to see uh, Rebecca, everybody now feels that they can compare themselves and put yourself and set up into a target mm -hmm. on what it is that you wanted it to achieve. So first I want to say thank you, Vern, for going through the almost the entire chapter uh, for the categories of involvement and how we go through that uh, emotions, which is an amazing training as well to go through. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, also to Rebecca, because you see, we want leaders like you to step up and say, you know what? Don't worry, we can manage the call. It's okay. And the best part is that you get to um, be with the team, train them and show them the phenomenal training that is already in place. I always say, and we have it also in your prosperity book, that system duplicates, but people don't. So your personality will not duplicate, but if you follow the system, you'll definitely will. And the intention once you are empowering people and reaching uh, your team is not really to find somebody else that's like you, but someone that's better than you and have other, you know, talents and other capabilities so that you can become a team, you know, get your strengths, my strengths, so now we can become a stronger team. And that's the amazing, amazing part of our business. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Rebecca from Ottawa. Excited to see you on Saturday. Thank you, Bern, all the way to the Caribbean in St. Lucia. Thank you all, team, for being here tonight at the Forensic Call. Do not miss this Saturday. It's going to be 
an event of a lifetime. So make sure you tap on. I'm going to be doing some Facebook lives as well as per the request of the leaders. So we get to train, you know, our team members of the uh, newest and the uh, raised in commissions we're going to have as of June 1st. So go take advantage. Remember, Fountain of Life introductory prize will be ending soon. And I want you all to take action into it and be excited to share with all your team. So having said that, with that is my words of closing for the evening and have a phenomenal, phenomenal week. And I'll see you here on the next one. Thank you, Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye to you. We don't need no more, no stop Tell them wicked people I am a bondage I am a bondage Oh, 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 oh,